Welcome to Tech Confidential's Behind the Money. I'm Mary Kathleen Flynn, and I'm at Graycroft Partners, and I'm talking with Alan Patrickoff. Alan, you've really been advocating calm in this economic storm. Why is calm important, and what are the risks involved in panicking? Well, someone has to be calm at this time. Uh, I, I certainly don't have any perfect information, but my experience in the past is that uh, uh, when everything looks the worst, is probably a time when you shouldn't be running for the hills because it's probably too late. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, this is a time, as we've seen in the past, where new companies are going to continue to be formed uh, and uh, there are going to be a lot of good opportunities. As to those companies who are in business, I think they, uh, if they, they couldn't uh, be too prepared for this because I don't think too many people were prepared for the extent of the of the decline we've had recently. But I think that uh, there has been obviously a wake-up call and it's a good time for people to practice, to, to demonstrate good business practices and, and build up their cash reserves. And to, uh, uh, I think it will cut the wheat from the chaff. I mean, if there are companies that uh, don't justify continued support, they probably will fall by the wayside. Uh, but I think we're basically in a healthier position than we've been in a lot of other downturns that I've seen over the past. Well, people have been talking a lot about burn rates and how they're much lower than they were, say, in the dot-com bubble. Can you give us a feel for that, how that's coming into play? Well, I, I'm totally uh, in agreement with that comment because in the late 90s and early 2000s, uh, frankly, the venture industry got carried away with itself. I don't blame it. Uh, on any one part, but the investment bankers fed it, uh, the venture capitalists fed it, the entrepreneurs fed it, and uh, the public uh, probably was the most uh, guilty because they bought IPOs in enormous quantities at insane valuations. And so it, it had a trickle-down effect, and uh, a lot of companies got capitalized that shouldn't have been. A lot of uh, companies got started by entrepreneurs who didn't have any skills that would justify being an entrepreneur. Everybody wasn't made to be an entrepreneur. Lots of people really should have jobs. There's nothing wrong with having a good job and doing, building up through a company. And uh, uh, a lot more money was raised for a lot of companies than should have been because the venture capitals uh, had uh, large investment pools and they were putting it to work. So a lot of companies got started with too much money and the entrepreneurs were inexperienced and spent it very quickly. And what happened was a lot of the venture people all of a sudden got stuck. When the public market fell off a cliff, they had no ability to uh, go to anyone else for another round and they really had to put in the second and third and fourth rounds to keep companies alive. Plus the fact that they had put so much in in the first round uh, made it very difficult for them psychologically and financially to walk away from a large investment. Uh, in the last three or four years, uh, maybe people learned from what happened in the 2000 bust and uh, therefore companies were started with less capital uh, and there were, was more benchmarking from uh, you know, start up to A rounds and B rounds, et cetera. And I don't think anyone who really understands what's going on has financed any company with the idea that they were going to be saved by the greater fool theory and that there was going to be a public market to buy their, uh, their properties at exorbitant values. I mean, we invest, uh, we have invested in the last several years, and I think most sound people have with the understanding, with the idea that there isn't going to be a public market, even before this happened. I mean, It's been dead for a while. The yeah, IPM public market. market is not the way, the exit strategy that it used to be uh, for a whole bunch of reasons, but uh, that, you know, either making it on your own through cash flow or sale to another corporate entity is probably the exit strategy. The IPO market's been dead for a long time, but when it comes to mergers and acquisitions of venture-backed companies, that's dipped recently too. So how do you look at startups with respect to viable exits today? Well, I don't think this is particularly a good time to exit anything, uh, whether it's privately to a sale to a corporation or uh, in the public market. Uh, you know, it's like if you had a stock portfolio, a smart person 
it's too late to sell your stocks. You really want to hold tight and ride through this, uh, perhaps getting rid of anything that you really think is a, uh, has a really negative outlook. But I think that's the same with venture capital. Uh, this is a time to uh, ride through the storm and to uh, make sure you're a survivor. This is not a time to get carried away with euphoria, but uh, exercising good business principles and uh, rationalizing your business uh, to the uh, you know to the greatest extent you can do. What does that mean for investing in new companies, um, the, the existing companies in your portfolio? You know, increasing those reserves rather than making new investments. Well, uh, I mean, certainly you have to have some reserves for the companies you've financed, but. Uh, we uh, have been careful, and I think most people that I know have been careful, and I think we do have reserves for follow-on uh, in reasonable levels, but we're also prepared to walk away if they don't justify it. And we are open to buy. I mean, we don't do specific grassroots startups in the sense that, you know, it's a business plan and an idea. We look for some initial commercial, well, no, some initial uh, what I call commercial, trans uh, commercial traction. Uh, so there's some indication that, uh, you know, as they say, the dogs are eating the dog food, that it has some modest revenues or it has page views or it has some take up that you can uh, say looks like people want this product as opposed to being an idea or a technology that is a, a breadboard design. You said you're willing to walk away. And, of course, in the last economic downturn, we saw all kinds of companies fold. Are you thinking that we're going to see a lot of layoffs this time around and a lot of companies fold? Well, I think there are going to be casualties. I don't know what a lot is. I, I think that, uh, as I say, I think for the most part, I, um, what I've seen is companies are in be much better shape, not just better, but much better shape than they were at that time. They haven't built in these, these exorbitant cost structures that uh, will cause them to fall off a roof uh, and, you know, and, and need a bridge to no place. Uh, I, I think that people are, uh, companies are better, sounder financed than they were at that time. And uh, you know, I think they have to have a 12 to 18 month cushion. And I think that smart people, smart entrepreneurs will not focus as much on the price as getting an adequate amount of money to carry them through and not uh, dream of, uh, of sugar plums and uh, fairies and, and, and think things are going to uh, turn around here quickly because I don't think they will. Mm -hmm.